Conservative conference civil war. A new PM arriving for her first full day of conference, but what was meant to be a victory lap has instead morphed into a fight for survival. Chris Philp, catastrophic communications. Did you or did ideas. you not present uh, I'm them not gonna, with a I'm paper not gonna, I'm not go. And Connor Burns, kick to the curb. These are the interesting times. Hello all, my name's Matt Johnson, and welcome to The Interesting Times, a show that likes to take a sideways swipe at politics right here in the UK. The Conservative Party conference was on in Birmingham last week, giving us an opportunity to be appalled by even more people. Outside protesters were chanting, Tory scum, get out of Brum, which must have made them thankful that the conference wasn't in boar hunt. So, what sort of cesspit of the morally but not financially bankrupt Conservatives were there? There was Suella Braverman. She was following on from Priti Patel as two Home Secretaries whose family moved to the UK from overseas. Making it clear, the biggest problem in the UK is families attempting to move to the UK. And although for Priti Patel it was mostly business, Suella wants to let you know that denying people asylum isn't just personal, it's a passion. I would love to be having a, a front page of the Telegraph yeah. with a, fly, a plane taking off to Rwanda. That's my dream. So my mother was recruited by the NHS. My dad came here because uh, he was effectively kicked out of Kenya. With yeah, nothing like getting to safety than yanking up the drawbridge behind you. It's not my freedom of expression to protest violently. No, you can't just start a riot or glue yourself to the roads and get away with it. Pretty sure if you're gluing yourself to the M25, then getting away isn't really the plan. Then there's MP for Ashfield, 30p Lee Anderson. The red wall is it is a red wall for a reason. We had Brexit, we had Brexit, we had Boris Red Corbyn three years ago. Now we've got Theresa May, it's a different ball game altogether. It's trust. It's Theresa May, you wish. At least when she got handed her P45 after a speech, it was a joke. And then there was party chairman and Lex Luther Loser, Jake Berry. But first things first, let's get something cleared up. Hours after the mini budget last fr on Friday, last Friday, did you celebrate with the Chancellor and a group of hedge fund managers at a champagne reception? Conservative Party, and in fact, these people should be lauded because we don't have public funding of political parties, and these are people who go out, make money, and donate to political parties. Thanks for confirming the pound trashers were at a champagne reception with the Chancellor, Jake. People know that when their bills arrive, they can either cut their consumption or they can get higher salary or higher wages, go out there and get that new job. And we also know that the lower paid in this country, as a percentage of their income, pay more in national insurance than higher earners. Which they shouldn't. Which is the responsibility of the government? Which is the Conservative Party? Which you are the chairman of? Quasi Quartin then stepped up to address the conference after his U-turn on the tax cut for the insanely rich. Our growth plan set out 10 days ago will ensure we focus relentlessly on economic growth. Because we may, must face up to the fact that for too long, our economy has not grown enough. The path ahead of us was one of slow, managed decline. Well, to be fair to him, I don't think you can say it's managed anymore. Last week, we saw a Labour Party with the same old ideas, renationalisation, empty slogans. Yes, Labour and their empty slogans like getting Britain moving. But this conference was all about lies trust, or should that be lies two face trust, as the Prime Minister wants to make it clear what she thought of the great British workers. If British workers um, produce less per hour, then, and that's a combination of kind of skill and application. Oops, I mean, what she thinks of the great British workers when the cameras are holding. I'm driven in this mission by my firm belief in the British people. She walked on to moving on up by the M people. Fair enough, they crash a pound, where else is there to go? I have three priorities for our economy. Growth, growth, and growth. So, you have one priority then? This speech was bad, so bad that a body language expert gave this assessment. You're gonna have to do a bit of fracking to find her charisma, aren't you, really? Ouch. But don't worry, there were a couple of intelligent, articulate and clever individuals at this conference. Get out. 
and take your democracy and planet saving facts with you. She then got back on track, apparently, with a big round of applause from everybody. Hey, when you're as far down in the polls as she is, I suspect they'll take any votes, even if they're only sympathy ones. But not everyone was happy, and there was talk from some MPs of having another leadership election, as they realised they've managed to swap one blonde charismatic idiot for another, and lost the charisma. So, crushing protests, blaming migrants, denying climate change, and giving tax breaks to the wealthy, just business as usual, really. While all this was going on, MP, which I'm guessing in this case means media punch bag, a last man you want on national television fighting your case, Chris Philp, went on national television to fight the government's case of the U-turn on scrapping the top rate of income tax for the ridiculously rich. Firstly, on to Kay Burley at Sky, and the public wanted to know whose idea giving an income tax for the top earners was. But Chris Philp wasn't budging. Uh, well, obviously, they talk to me um, about these things. Um, but as I say, they talk to a lot of people uh, no, that's about not this. My question, because, Mr. Philp. Uh, How know, involved were you in the process? Well, you know, the Prime Minister and Chancellor talk to me about this as they talk to other people. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go into the details of what Why ideas not? were or were not discussed by cabinet. Why not? Because it, those are those are because those are private conversations. Was it your idea? We discussed Was it mentioned lots and lots of paper? different ideas. Okay, I think I've, I've said as much as I want to say about this. What a mystery. Who on earth could have come up with... Yes, it was him. Absolutely and completely. He then followed that up with an appearance on Good Morning Britain, which was a good morning for anyone except Chris Philp. To give you credit, Mr Philp, um, because you keep coming on, and now you're coming on when there has been... Look, it's frankly an embarrassing U-turn. Yes, ironic for a man who insists that lessons have been learnt, that he still thinks appearing on these shows is anything but disastrous. And just in, in the last couple of days, Connor Burns has been suspended from government for serious misconduct, which, knowing this lot, must be pretty bad, and could be anything from murder to telling the truth. There are no further details, but Connor Burns does have previous for intimidating a member of the public over a financial dispute with his father, which saw him resigning as a trade minister. So what is it this time? The Times has hedged its bets with groping, and let's be honest, looking like the most likely answer. Mum's net went with anything from sex and drugs to getting his bits out in a bar. And Melanie Brown, Mel B, or Scary Spice as she's known, sent a cryptic tweet about a comment made to her by Connor Burns in a lift. Or as Connor Burns himself would put it, I have no idea. Could be all of it. But there's only one place to turn to for your news when things are going badly. Going badly news. That's what it stands for, right? And in another of their segments that we can all agree will definitely age well, they asked people to take a moment to remember the true victim of the Connor Burns misconduct reports. Connor Burns. The Prime Minister took direct action on being informed of this allegation. Mr Burns says he's been given no detail of these specific allegations and says that he regrets what he describes as the party's rush to judgment uh, around serious misconduct because it's allegations, nothing is proven, uh, but uh, he is out of a job. I do think that innocence until proven guilty. Worth mentioning, of course, that Connor Burns hasn't lost his job. He was an MP before this started and is still one now, just not with the Tory party. And bearing in mind their approval rating at the moment, that might not be such a bad thing. Might have a better chance to be re-elected. This just in on a just in. It was groping. Yep, could have spotted that one coming. Just another day at a Conservative Party conference. When they should be getting grips with the state of the country, it seems like the Conservative members were getting grips with other members. And that's it. No time to talk about Tim Brexit bubbly Weatherspoon posting losses of £30 million. Don't worry, Tim. I understand the local Tesco's is hiring. No time to talk about further party conferences, which have started yesterday for the SNP and DUP. The SNP will be in Aberdeen outlining their plans for the future, but unfortunately they'll be unable to make a stronger case for Scottish independence than the Conservatives have already done. And the DUP started theirs the same day from Belfast, where their leader Geoffrey Donaldson spoke passionately to a, I'm going to say niche group of individuals, in front of a backdrop proclaiming, moving forward together. Three words that don't really spring to mind when discussing the DUP. No time to talk about Boris Johnson's resignation honours list, which may include a Putin-linked donor and his own father. Wait, they're two separate people? No time 
And we will next week to talk about the Department of Work and Pensions on a likely collision course with the rest of Parliament if they don't decide to put up benefits in line with inflation. DUP Secretary Chloe Smith, seen here riding a mobility scooter to understand the plight of the disabled before presumably blacking up to understand racism, is said to be opposed to cutting benefits but may not have an option as she works for a twat. Thank you all so much for watching and if you are enjoying these videos then please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit all the notifications bell and I'll see you all next week. Take care.